Hi, this is Mr. T here. This is the second video going through the 2015 mechanics exam for Level 2 Physics, or that's Achievement Standard 91171. Uh, this is Question 2. Okay, so Question 2 is in the context of ice skating here, and uh, it's really about momentum. And one of the first things we have to do when we look at this question, as they've talked about Roy here, is identify um, what information they've given us. So here they've told us uh, the velocity of Janet's velocity beforehand is uh, 5 meters per second. And they've told us afterwards that the velocity of Roy and Janet equal 2.2 meters per second and this told us that Roy's mass is 65 kgs. So um, the first thing they asked us to do is start, state the law of physics that applies to this situation. Of course this is um, the law that the total momentum beforehand equals the total momentum afterwards. Uh, so whatever the momentum of Roy and Janet before equals the momentum of Roy and Janet afterwards. Uh, that's an achieved question. We're going to, they're going to expect us to do a calculations next and that's exactly what is the next question and that's to calculate the mass of Janet. So in order to calculate the mass of Janet we need to use this equation total momentum before equals total momentum afterwards which we can represent in this uh, in numeric form I guess uh, sigma here means the sum of P is the momentum before equals the sum of the momentum afterwards. So we start checking all the momentums. The momentum before is only the mass of Janet, which I'm going to put here as an M, times her velocity. And the momentum afterwards is the mass of Janet times her new velocity, which is 2.2 meters per second, plus the mass of Roy times his velocity. So we can see that we have uh, this unknown value in here called m. It's in two different places, so, and we're going to have to solve, uh, rearrange, and then solve. Uh, rearrange so we have m as the subject, and then solve to find out what the value of m is. So the first thing that uh, I do here is uh, I've just simplified this. So we've got 5m plus 2.2m plus 143, so I've multiplied those two together take the 2.2 and subtract it from both sides and so we get 2.2 times the mass of Janet equals 143 so the mass of Janet equals 143 divided by 2.8 so I said 2.2 before that gives us an answer of 51.07 or 51 kilograms when we put it to the correct number of significant figures and just to double check back here is that what we'd expect for a mass of Janet most likely, um, we're going to expect something around 50 to 70 kilos. We have 51. Uh, it's uh, conceivable that her mass is smaller. Uh, if we'd had something like 5.1 kgs or 500 kgs, we'd know that that wouldn't be a mass of a person, but we're quite comfortable that 51 could be the mass of Janet. Okay, so this question here is... Uh, it, though it's quite complex uh, and sometimes it shows uh, comprehensive understanding, in this case it's just an in-depth understanding in this um, exam. Okay, so this is a merit question. Okay, what assumptions do we made when we did Janet's mass? So the assumption that we had to make is the assumption we made at the start. The momentum before equals the momentum after. And that is only ever true when there is no force acting on the system. So in this case, there is no force acting on the system because there is no friction on the ice. This is an, uh, a merit question as well. And in order to get this, you need to clearly state that there, there is no friction. Uh, there is no forces because there is no friction on the ice. And because there are no external forces, momentum is conserved. Okay, this is, uh, so if you just said, hey, the ice produces no friction, you achieved. If you said um, there's no external forces, the momentum is conserved, you achieved. But if you put both points linked together, you get the merit or the in-depth understanding for that answer. Okay, so uh, question B. 
comprehensive explanation of what Janet needs to do while landing. She jumps off a bench so she does not hurt herself. Use a formula to explain your answer. Okay, so this one here, uh, obviously the formula we're going to use is um, this one here. Delta P equals F delta T. Okay, so change of momentum impulse. So this is an impulse question. We're going to expect that around these momentum questions. And we're going to expect this is a, a type of question is common. And we're going to be uh, pretty clear. Oh, sorry, we're going to be um, used to writing this type of answer. Okay, so first thing, Janet, when she lands, needs to bend her knees. Okay. Um, why does she need to bend her knees? Uh, assuming that, that this momentum change is the same for any jump that she makes, okay, then we get this here. We get the force, and, and let me just go over how we got this. Okay, I rearranged this equation. We had force equals delta P over delta T. Okay, and if we said that the momentum is constant, we get that force is proportional to 1 over delta T. Or, this is force is inversely proportional to the contact time. Why did I not put time after that? Let's just write that. So the contact time and force are inversely proportional. Force is on the top here on this side of the left-hand side of the equation, and time is underneath a fraction. So they are inversely proportional. It means if one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. Okay, and we, we derive that from this equation. And this proportionality statement is really important. I would encourage you to write the proportionality statement and state it. But they will be looking for either one of those. And sometimes they could be looking for both. Okay, by bending her knees, so let's link it together. She's increased the contact time therefore decrease the average force. This is because it's inversely proportional. I don't have to state that again if I've clearly um, stepped it out in statements. Less force will cause less damage. I'm linking it back to what they really want to know is why she won't hurt herself. Well, there's less force, she won't hurt herself, so that's going to cause less damage. Okay, So this here, we'd expect, is an excellence answer or an excellence question. In order to get the excellence, you need to state that the change in momentum will be the same, whether she bends her knees or not. And you need to state a proportionality statement. You're either going to do it here using an equation or using words. I would encourage you to do both. You need to link it together and say when she bends her knees, the contact time increases so the average force will decrease and just to be sure we're going to say just in case they're not sure themselves less force will cause less damage okay next question when Janet jumps down her momentum is conserved explain okay so this is pretty straightforward answer oh sorry is her momentum conserved no it, her, no it isn't the momentum is not conserved because she has an unbalanced force acting on her, gravity. Momentum is only conserved when there's no unbalanced forces. That's what we said in this uh, question 1-3. So this is actually the same uh, information that we gave in 1-3, but we're giving the opposite. We're saying no, momentum won't be conserved because she has an external force called gravity acting on her. And that makes sense because, look, she's, not, she's getting faster. You know, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I hope that has helped. Hey, look, if you like uh, this, uh, what we've done here, my walkthrough explanation of this, uh, just put a like on this video and uh, go and check out the other videos that I've done to cover the 2015 mechanics exam. Thanks a lot.